Good morning everyone. I'm out here at the lake today and I'm going to be showing you how you can fish all by yourself with not a lot of equipment. So I know some people do bait fishing, some people do regular fly fishing which happens in a stream and I do a little bit of a combination of both. So I'm going to show you how from the shore here I do a combination of bait fishing and fly fishing and I'm going to walk you through the steps of how I tie my flies, the equipment I use, and everything like that. So stay tuned and let's just enjoy this lovely morning. To start on your fishing journey, you will need two main pieces of equipment, a fishing rod and a net. Now there are three main types of reels. They are a spin casting reel, which is the enclosed type, a spinning reel, which is also known as an open reel, and finally a bait casting one. I have here a collapsible pole, which makes it easy to store my fishing gear in small spaces with a spinning or open cast reel. This reel is really important to me because it is one that my dad has had since I was a little kid and he just recently passed it on to me. I have a lot of fond memories of going to different lakes and fishing with my dad throughout my whole childhood, so this reel has a lot of sentimental value to me. I've always liked the open reel setup as it allows you to handle the line better. If any snags happen with the spool, it is a lot easier to fix them with an open reel than a closed one. You can also throw your line out farther with an open reel more than a closed one because you don't have the friction of that closed faced reel unit. I have a basic fishing net here as well that just has a sturdy net and a metal handle. This net really only works for larger fish, so if you are fishing for smaller species, you will need to get a net that doesn't have holes that are quite as big as the ones in my net. You can get a fishing reel, pole, and a net from various stores, but I would encourage you to try out different reel types so you can see which one you like the best. The next important tackle box item you will need to bring is a pair of regular nail clippers. Instead of spending tons of money on fancy scissors to cut your line, you can just have a plain old pair of nail clippers. This allows you to cut off your extra line when you tie on hooks or flies, and it also allows you to quickly cut a line in a situation where you need to quickly untangle the pole. A small thing to note here is that using nail clippers only works with light to medium weight fishing line. If you are using very heavy or thick line, then the nail clippers most likely won't be able to cut it, and you will need either fishing scissors or another tool. Once you have all of those items, you are ready to figure out how you want to fish. I am primarily going to focus on my style of fly fishing, which is why you can see my fly fishing book here in this picture. This fly book is a family heirloom that was passed on to my dad and now is in my possession to help me find the best flies to use for fishing. When looking in a fly book, you need to also be looking around you. Try to pick a fly that looks very familiar to the insects you see flying around at the lake to help you attract the fish to your line. You also need to be aware of what size fish are most likely in the body of water you are at. I am fishing for rainbow trout today and this type of fish don't tend to get very big in this lake, so I will be selecting a medium sized fly to cast out with today. The other main item you need to have on hand is a fish keeper. This is a metal hook type that just slips through the gills of the fish you catch and keeps them close to your location while still allowing them to remain in the water. You can also use a rope one that again you would just slide into the fish's gills and then tie the rope onto a sturdy tree branch or rock to keep your fish nearby. So. With my style of fishing, you don't want to use this type of bobber. This type of bobber is for bait fishing. It has a jingle to it so that you can hear when a fish bites on your line. Instead, you want to use one of these that will just float along the surface. These are clear and plastic and they don't have any noise, so when you throw your line out, it's not going to cause as much of a disturbance in the water for the fish, and it's going to float along the top when you pull it in a little smoother so that you can create that illusion of that fly coming along like it would if it was a real bug on the surface. My reel that I'm using today is a collapsible, collapsible reel, so I had to open it up. I have an open cast reel, so I had to open the reel up to get the line back through. And then because I originally had a hook on this one, I had to clip the line with those nail clippers I showed you, and then I had to unwind the, band, the little rubber band that's in the middle part, and then pull my line through so that I have a new piece of line. And what's important is you want enough space between the bobber and the fly so that it'll kind of follow it, but it's not super close behind so that they don't see the bobber. Otherwise, they won't really pull on your line. So that's about an arm's length. It's actually a little more than that, so I'm going to shorten that up. And I'm just going to pull that line through that bobber there. And that's about where I want it. So in order to get it to stay, I'm going to just twist. I'm going to pull this bottom part out and twist it so that it's twisting the rubber band inside 
and then I'll just pull it on both sides to make sure that the bobber doesn't move. So that's how I get my line through. So after stretching my line out through my bobber and extending out my pole all the way, it was time to pick a fly. By looking around, I had noticed there was a lot of mosquitoes flying around and landing on the water. A lot of fish were jumping up to eat them, so I figured go, to go ahead and give this fly a try. If you were looking closely at the flybook picture from earlier, you might have noticed that the inside of the flybook looked a bit funny. That coloring inside the flybook is made out of a furry lining that keeps the hooks in place so that the flies don't get lost and they are easy to organize. I simply took the mosquito off the lining and had it ready to get tied onto the line. So here you can see the fly being tied onto the fishing line. You want to start out by threading the line through the little hole on the very top of the fly. Then you will want to cross that line back through itself between four and six times and then pull down your line and make a knot out of that cross section that you just did. Then you'll pull both ends of the line to make sure your knot is tight and won't come undone. Once you have made sure your knot is secure, you want to clip off the extra line that is behind your knot on the fly. This gives the illusion that the fly is real and not a fake. You want to clip it fairly close to your knot, but be careful that you don't clip your knot accidentally as this could result in you losing your fly the first time you go to cast your line out. Once you have selected and tied on the fly of your choice, you now need to get some water in your bobber. Since this clear bobber weighs less than the ones I showed you earlier for bait fishing, you need the water to give your line some weight so it can go further out when you cast it. You want to fill this type of bobber up at least halfway full of water. I chose to fill this bobber up a bit more than that so I had extra weight on my line. Notice in this picture that in the middle of the bobber is a rubber band. Keeping it tightly twisted like that in the picture is what keeps the bobber in place on your line so you can keep a good amount of distance between your bobber and your fly. Watch closely to see how you can get water into this type of bobber. Notice how the bottom part of the bobber is being pulled away. This allows you to dip the bobber into the water and fill it up at least halfway with water. Once you get the amount you want in the bobber, you simply take it back out of the water and release the bottom part of that rubber band connection. This will reseal the bobber so you don't lose the water in it when you go to cast out. So this is what the fly should look like. See how it's just right there in the middle of the screen and it's just being tugged along? That's what you want as you're reeling in because that looks identical to what mosquitoes and gnats will do when they land on the water and just skate along and that's how that fish will get caught. So when you go to cast, you're gonna take your first finger, pull the line back to the pole, then you'll flip the reel open and then that's when you will move the reel back and then you'll just fling it out and let that finger go and that will release and then you just close the reel and spin. Here you can see what it looks like when you do a normal cast out using the steps I just walked you through. So here we have a fish that's already been caught with this technique and this is what it looks like right before we're going to put him in a net. When you go to scoop your fish up with your net, you want to pull your pole towards the shore and dip the net into the water and scoop up your fish. This ensures that your fish doesn't jump off the hook and get away once they are out of the water. Shortly after the first trout was caught, a second one decided to take a nibble on the fly and was also successfully reeled in. Now as you guys can see, that fly there just sits right on the tip of his mouth and they hook it on and that's how he gets hooked. So that's what that process looks like and that's how they get reeled in. 
Once you have caught your fish, you need to put them on a fish keeper and put them back in the water if you are going to continue fishing. The keeper is the same one I showed you in the beginning of this video. I took this picture right after putting the first trout on the line, and my cast right after this picture is when the second one got reeled in. That's why you only see one fish here in this picture. Putting the fish back in the water keeps their body temperature low so that you can clean them later and then cook them. I always eat and cook the trout that I catch, which is why it's critical that the fish gets put back into the water so they don't spoil. The other thing to mention here is that you need to be aware of what the fishing limit is per body of water you are at. This lake currently allows five fish per person. To get an idea of how big your fish are, you can always use a tape measure like I did here in this picture to truly capture their size. So if you are going to bait fish, I would suggest using some power bait, which these are trout nuggets and we are fishing for trout today. So these come in really handy. They float on the top and leave a nice oily scent that kind of chums the water for the fish. The other thing you can use is some salmon eggs and these work really well as well up here at this lake. So these are also a great alternative. Um, you can also use night crawlers work well. And then also these little grubs um, that you can put on and those float as well and they'll be able to fish off the surface. Once you figure out what type of bait you want to use, now you need to tie on your hooks. You can use the same tying technique that I showed you with the flies to use for the hooks. Since these trout aren't very large, you can get away with using a size 7 hook. For larger species, you will want to get larger hooks. This picture here shows you what a completed bait pole setup looks like. You can see the red bobber, which has been put on the line in place of the clear one, along with the double hook setup I have that is filled with both salmon eggs and trout nuggets. You can use the same casting technique I showed you earlier with the fly to cast out your bait. In conclusion, there are many ways to fish, but this method is a simple and easy one that anyone can use to snag some trout. Good luck fishing, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more learn-by-doing 4-H friendly videos.